Hello everyone and welcome to the class. So what is the today's topic? Today we are going to talk about five kingdom classification. So let's talk about why there is a need for classification all over the world. So many languages are spoken and if the same name will be there for the different organism, it will be a lot of confusion. One person saying I am talking about Quechua, another person will understand he must be talking about earthworm. And if the other person interprets it as an roundworm, Ascaris, so there will be a lot of problem. So there was a need to classify the organisms and which should be accepted all over the world. So first came the scientist Aristotle. He classified the organisms mainly on the basis of the external features. Animal having blood, animal without blood. Now afterwards his pupil Theoprestus come and so on came. Two kingdom, three kingdom, four kingdom and finally the most accepted model of classification is the R.H. Whittaker five kingdom classification. In 1969 he gave five kingdom classification. Now let's comprehend our knowledge about this classification. The signs of grouping the organism on the basis what they are similar and on the basis what they are dissimilar. So the signs which deals with the similarities and differences and on that basis the organisms are grouped. So five kingdoms, how many kingdoms are there? Five, they are, let's see, Monera, Protesta, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. Fungi, Planty, Animalia. Why this become the most acceptable? Because we have certain criteria on which basis we classify all the living organism. So what are these criteria? Let's comprehend one by one. First is the cell structure. Whether it is made up of a single cell, then it is unicellular like in case of amoeba. And whether it is made up of many cells, that is multicellular, made of many cells. Like in human beings, we are made up of so many cells. The second criteria was their complexity. That is, whether they are prokaryote, pro means primitive and u means new. And karyon means the nucleus. Whether the genetic material is well organized or whether the genetic material is not well organized. In prokaryote, they don't have a well defined nucleus. While in eukaryote, the genetic material is inside the nucleus. Membrane with lot of cell organelles in them. The next mode was the how we intake our food. That is the mode of nutrition. Whether the organisms are able to prepare their own food. They are autotrophs. And when they are not able to prepare their own food. They are heterotrophs. Auto means self and troph means feed. So Plants because they are able to make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. An heterotroph which depends on the plant for getting the nourishment. Whether they eat plant, animal and can eat both plant and animal. The next mode was the reproduction. How they produce offspring to maintain the continuity of generation. By asexual method, no fusion of gametes. Sexual, male and the female gamete fuse together to form the zygote. The next mode was their evolutionary relationship. How the complex form of life has been developed from the simple form, the gradual process. So it depicts this. So whether they are motile, whether they are non-motile, this was also the criteria. So what he classified on the basis of prokaryote, primitive nucleus. Whether they are unicellular, whether they are multicellular. He classified food, whether they are able to make their own food, whether they are not able to make their own food, reproduction and how evolutionary relationship can be done with them. So let's comprehend about each and every kingdom one by one. Let's de deal them in detail. Okay, let's begin our journey into the five kingdoms. The first one from the Monera. You simply remember one one word of each kingdom so that all the classification become very easy for you. They include 
यूनिसेल्युलर प्रोटीन है वेल डिफाइंड न्यूक्लियस इज एब्सेंट एंड दे आर मेड अप ऑफ वन सेल नेक्स्ट दे इंक्लूड आर्की बैक्टीरिया टू बैक्टीरिया साइनो बैक्टीरिया एंड माइक्रोप्लाज्मा प्यूरोमोनिया लाइक ऑर्गेनिज्म इज कॉल्ड एज दी माइक्रोप्लाज्मा सो आर्की दे लिव इन द एक्सट्रीम हैबिट्स लाइक इन द हॉट थर्मल स्प्रिंग्स इन द गट ऑफ द रूमिनेंस Down, that's why we are able to produce the biogas because they produce methane, methanogens. They can even live in the high salty environment. That's why halophiles. On this basis, thermal, thermophiles, methanogens because they produce methane, halophiles because they live in the extreme salt condition. New means new. So. they have the cell wall which is made up of the peptido lipids rigid cell wall cyanobacteria what is cyanobacteria it is called as the blue green algae if we talk about the example then it is anabina and nostoc anabina and nostoc and they contain special cell named heterocells because they are able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen pleuro pneumonia like organism they don't have a rigid cell wall they are the smallest can able to change their shape because they don't have a rigid cell wall the peculiar characteristic is that they are able to survive in the absence of oxygen so they are anaerobic and responsible for many diseases okay then reproduction it can be asexual and it can be the sexual a primitive form of sexual reproduction is present in them which is called as the conjugation what happens in conjugation the two bacteria come in physical contact with each other with the help of this conjugation tube and this tube is made from the flagellum if they will be motile they will be having a flagellum most of the bacteria are not able to derive their own food so they are heterotrophs when blue green algae have the chlorophyll pigment so is able to synthesize its own food parasitic they can be okay the so simple thing in monad and what is there it is unicellular prokaryote and bacteria come in them and when you know the bacteria you will get the characters okay bacteria the most abundant microorganism useful harmful cause of many diseases and lactobacillus is there which is useful to us coming next to the another kingdom that is protista it will include all unicellular eukaryote unicellular eukaryote single cell so let's see the example so that the characters become easier for us amoeba Paramecium, Euglena, Plasmodium, and Trypanosoma. Move your hand with me so that you will be easily remembering it because moreover it is a theoretical part and less explanatory and diagrammatic. So, what is amoeba? It moves with the help of the finger-like projections, which are called as the Pseudopodia, false pupa. They are able to change their shape. In Paramecium, it looks like a chapel. So this is sleeper and it may cool, and they move with the help of the numerous cilia. Peculiar character, micro and micro nucleus, and has the gullet for engulfing the food. Euglena, very important, connecting link between the plant and animal. from plant they have the chloroplast autotroph and from animal they have the protein coat like the rigid cell wall plasmodium is a parasitic one it is responsible for cause of malaria because 
it lives in the salivary gland of the female anopheles mosquito and when this mosquito bites us we are suffer from malaria trypanosoma it is responsible for sleeping sickness so the mode of nutrition can be autotrophic because the nuclina and then it is a heterotrophic can move with the help of pseudopodia cilia flagella mode of reproduction can be the asexual and sexual and if we talk about asexual binary fission it occurs in two step one is karyokinesis karyo means nucleus division of nucleus followed by division of cytoplasm cytokinesis which will give rise to the two cells which will be identical to each other they will be same to same okay let's move forward we have completed two class monera and protista now comes the third kingdom that is the fungi okay what do they include they include unicellular and multicellular eukaryotes here comes the cell wall the cell wall is made up of chitin monomer and acetyl glucosamine so they have a thread like structures these thread like structures are called as the hyphae and hyphae is grouped together entangled to form a network that is called as the mycelium in a hyphae contain many nucleus and it is cnocytic if it has septa then septic heterotrophic mode of the nutrition let's see the example so it becomes easier for us yeast molds <clears throat> aspergillus anisium so when you see that bread that rhizopus it all come under this conjug okay they are parasitic too for example in case of the oxima motile also and reproduction is by budding sexual and sexual method with the form of the spores different types of spores are found they form the bud which separate from the parent body and get develop into the new organism so fungi it is single unicellular eukaryote is the yeast otherwise they are multicellular cell wall made up of chitin hyphae mycelium heterotrophic mode of nutrition parasitic and saprophytic feeding on dead organic matter the important thing is that they contain the decomposers decomposers form com, decompose on complex organic matter and form simple so they are important in recycling the nutrients back into the ecosystem now the last two kingdom are remaining that are plantae and animalia let's take them simultaneously so that becomes easy they are multicellular eukaryote they contain the cell wall which is made up of cellulose they do not contain the cell wall they are plants are autotrophs mostly plants will come and they are heterotrophs photosynthesis occur in them generally they are immobile they fix to the plant soil with the help of the roots and do not move the stored food form is the starch reproduce by both asexual and sexual means but in case of the animal they are heterotrophs if they are only plant plant eating they are herbivores if they are flesh eating they are carnivores and they can eat both plants and animals then they are omnivores stored food is in the form of the glycogen so it includes red cockroach human beings etc so here we conclude fitica five kingdom classification monera protista fungi plantae and animalia unicellular prokaryote unicellular eukaryote uni multicellular eukaryote and multicellular eukaryote autotrophic and heterotrophic i think that's all for the day it's enough because all is a theoretical part have a great day ahead thank you